Uh, let's see what we got here. I got to get this set up. All right, it looks like you can see me right there. What I'm doing here, I'm using my phone, okay? So I got to get the camera adjusted, and I'm using it on the back side here. All right, that looks like it's pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Let me test one more time. And uh, can everybody hear me out there? Um, we're doing a live video today on uh, Southwest Rod and Custom SWRNC, my friend Pete channel. I usually normally have been doing live videos on uh, DIY Auto School. We're trying to uh, buck this channel up a little bit, get it, get more subscribers. We're trying to, to um, you know, clean it up, let's just say, okay? Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get mad, holler and scream and cuss and fuss. It's just that we have got to really start working on this channel as far as getting subscribers, views, and everything else that goes along with that due to the fact that I have actually been on YouTube for going on um, 12, maybe 13 years. And, okay, just checking. And this is where it all started, right here. Actually, it started on my other YouTube channel called 522 DR Wagon. Um, let me go ahead and explain before we get into the Volkswagen situation because we want to get some viewers on this. And like I said, I don't get a lot of uh, views as much as I do on DIY Auto School. Um, and if you are subscribed to DIY Auto School and you're subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel, I appreciate all your support. Um, I actually have followers from the very, very beginning that still watch my videos today vigorously as they are poured out. I try to make as many videos as possible. Um, I love and enjoy um, editing my videos. Um, it takes a very long time to film the videos, to get everything I need to, uh, what can I say, make the video itself. Um, I want to make some holiday videos, but the thing is, it actually takes two or three days just to film all the action that it takes to make a Santa Claus video. So, it, you know, it, it's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, grab your camera, go out, make a video, you know, come back and edit. It, it ain't that way. Uh, so, it, it, it takes a very long time to do this, and that's one reason I don't like to do live videos uh, due to the fact that this is taking up time. This is taking up time that I could be working on the car and getting stuff done. Um, I get a lot of comments that says, are you charging people while you're, you're filming? Are you charging them? If it's taking you four or five days of filming to make a 20 minute day, are they getting charged for that? Uh, to clarify that and to clear that up, no, they're not. Okay. When I'm making uh, instructional DIY videos or a clown act video, which is highly impossible out here in Moab, Utah, I'm just going to let everybody know that. Um, I kind of miss my old shop in Dallas due to the fact that I'd have a lot of visitors come over. And a lot of the visitors that came over, we'd, we'd actually make videos on this channel right here. Um, out here in Moab, Utah, it's, it doesn't happen. Um, it's basically me, myself, and I, we, and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. Um, once in a while, we go see our buddy River Rat. Uh, we get him on camera. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, you know, nobody wants to film out here. Nobody wants to be part of the action. And it's just, that's the way it is. You know, we live in a different part of the country, a different situation, different people, different attitudes. And that's what I miss about my shop in Dallas is all the people that used to come over and visit and hang out. And to be honest with you, it's pretty lonely out here in Moab, Utah. It's pretty lonely. Um, trying to be friends with people out here is, I don't know, it's just, it's different. Let's just put it that way. It's different and it's just, I, I'm not used to this. I'm used to the front, Texas, the friendly state, shake a hand, make a friend. Uh, I found a lot of people out here in this part of the country 
and I'm going to say in Moab area, and not just Moab, but other parts of Utah and possibly Colorado. I mean, it's down to business, do your thing, and hit the road. You know, people don't want to be friends anymore. They don't want to associate. They just want to get what they get and, you know, go down the street, which is fine. That's the way people want to be. That's the way people want to be. Um, I don't like it, but that's the way it is. Um, I'm going to put the mirror back there because I can't see what's going on. See if we got any view. If we got, do we even have viewers that are watching? Uh, I think we do. I don't, I don't even know. Can someone leave a comment and let me know that you're out there, please? Please leave a comment and let me know. Okay, there you go. All right, I see some people leaving comments. Okay, so we got people watching. Hey, thank you. All right. <laughs> Great. That's fucking awesome. Uh, Sammy Salami, where's he at? He's uh, in Miami right now. He'll be back right before the holidays sometime. He told me to tell everybody out there, thank you very much uh, for being a beautiful guy that he is. Uh, if it wasn't for you, Sammy Salami probably wouldn't be here. And yeah, there you go. Sammy Salami's out there and uh, he'll be back. I was talking about um, video making and working on cars. If I didn't make videos, I can have the cars and the work done a lot faster. Now, I ain't no megastar YouTuber. I'm not a megastar YouTuber and I'm... I'm Building up to all this because I got something important to say here. What I am, I am a person that likes to give. I don't brag about stuff that I have or stuff that I'm getting or how much money I got or what I just done to make money. I don't brag about that shit because I don't think I need to. I think that a person that has to brag about everything that they do in life and most of the stuff that they brag about is about their self. And I think that somebody that does that uh, continuously all the time is a very, very lonely and depressed individual that's grasping for attention. Personally, I don't give a fuck if anybody knows what the fuck I have here because it's none of your business. If I want to share something with you, I'll do that. But I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, look what I got. Look at that. I got this copper rock and I found this rock and you don't got it. You don't have it, but I do. Okay. Or, or uh, you know, maybe an hour later, I'll get on Facebook and say, hey, look at here. I got Gorilla Glue. What do you got? What do you got, buddy? Look at that. I got Gorilla Glue. All right. Or I might go to the scrap iron yard. Here's a good example. I'll go to the scrap iron yard and... Um, take some scrap iron there, and then I'll take a picture of the $100 cash I made, you know, fold it out, and then I'll tell everybody, hey, look at here, I went to scrap iron, got me $100. Got me $100 here. You know, um, I had a guy text me pictures. I'm not going to mention names, and if he's watching this, you'll know who he is. Uh, he texted me pictures. He said, yeah, look what I got. I got a free car. The guy wanted it off his property. I ended up selling it for $975. <laughs> um, I don't believe in bragging rights. I don't believe that. I think that everybody's created equal. And if you have to brag about stupid shit, you know, um, you're a lonely person. That's all there is to it. You're grasping for attention. If I got a car and I got it for free and I didn't have to pay nothing. And now this is during the holidays, let's just say. And this is a good example um, first of all, I wouldn't tell people that I got the car for free. I also wouldn't tell them how much money I got for the car. And I would take probably half the money that I made off that car and I would donate it to charities in need. Or I would go to my local church. I'm a Catholic. I would go to Catholic church and I would ask the father, is there a family out there that needs Christmas presents? They cannot afford any presents for their children. And then I would go out and I would buy the children some presents to put under the tree. That's what I would do with the money. Um, that's why I'm not a millionaire. That's why I'm not a doctor. That's why I'm not a dentist. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a labor forced worker that works for everything I got. If I was a doctor, and I'm going to bring this up in a minute. If I was a doctor, 
I would be giving my services away for free. I would be one of the poorest doctors on earth. I wouldn't be a greedy doctor like today, for instance. Let me go ahead and explain this. Um, I got a trigenital nerve situation going on in my face. I've had it for eight years. Uh, I went to the local doctor because before you go see a specialist, you got to see the local doctor. Then they request that you go see them and they get a work order or whatever the fuck they call it. So they get this work order and it's all the way up in Salt Lake or Provo. And the nurse calls and she says, yeah, the closest, the closest we can see is July 10th. And I'm like, what the fuck? What if I have an aneurysm? Or I have a brain tumor or, or something, you know, before that. Well, that's the soonest we got. Take it or leave it. Basically, she was saying, look, the insurance that you carry, we don't want. Go somewhere else. Okay, I got cash. We don't want your cash. Greedy infested, hypocritical, scumbag doctors. I'm sitting here. I'm going I'm to make myself the example. I'm sitting here. My face is in such pain. It feels like I took this hammer and hit my head with it right here as hard as I could. The pain goes from here down to my nose, over this way, and then across my lip right here. Okay. Like right now, when I'm talking to you, it's, 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 it's throbbing. It feels like it's on fire. It's burning. And the pain goes to here, right here. Oh, and then it comes around here and then goes down my neck. Now, the doctor today said that she thinks that I do have a trigenial nerve problem, which I've known that for eight fucking years. Okay, I went to other doctors eight years ago, got the same shit, got the same shit around. Here's some diabetic pills. Try them. Pills do not fix nerves. The only thing that can fix a nerve problem is surgery. Plain and simple. Any type of nerve pills that they issue you or prescribe to you are bipolar pills, antidepressant pills, diabetic pills, and what else? Uh, suicide tendency pills. Those are your basic four nerve pills that they prescribe to you. Now, this is what happens, see, when this shit starts. They give you a pill for this. Then you tell them, well, I can't do that. Okay, let's give you this pill to take care of that. Okay, well, now I can't do this. Okay, so now I'm taking a pill for this. and They gave me a pill for that. Now I got to take another pill for this number two, and then before you know it, you're taking 18 to 25 fucking pills to take a shit, take a piss, go to sleep, wake the fuck up, go take a shower, shave your fucking face, open your fucking eyes and blink, and possibly, hopefully, maybe, you might wake up in the morning and see the fucking sunrise and pray to God and say, thank you, God, for letting me live one more day in pain because of the doctors. The only thing that fixes a nerve problem is surgery. That's it. So I tried these fucking nerve pills eight years ago and they were fucking with my brain. I took them and threw them in the trash. Fuck you. I would rather live with this pain the rest of my life than take any fucking pills that are specifically designed for bipolar, antidepressant, suicide tendencies, or fucking diabetes that I don't have. I don't have diabetes. I had one doctor tell me, he, uh, I, I paid this fucking doctor cash money, um, $800 for a 20 minute office visit, cash. He uh, gave me, that's the one that gave me these fucking bullshit nerve pills. Um, I called him up, I said, they're not doing nothing, they're making me hear voices and my fucking ears ringing and uh, I'm tripping and falling over shit, and I'm dizzy. He gets on the phone, and he says, look, all right, I did everything I could do for you, all right? There's nothing else I can do. There's nothing I can do, all right? I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I got other patients that are waiting for me. I got to go. Click. I had one doctor tell me it was my teeth, 
So dumb ass me, because when you're in this type of pain, you're going to believe everything, anything and everything you can. I had one guy tell me it was my teeth. I told him this is not my teeth. Yeah, it is your teeth. It's your teeth. Okay. Do you see that right there? Do you see this right here? Look, look at this right here. This hole. All right. Do you see that, that big hole? That was two teeth. Two teeth. One of them needed a root canal, and the other one had a big filling in it. I could have kept that one with a big filling, and I could have got a root canal. All right? I go to the dentist. The dentist tells me, no, you're, there's not, you need this and that. That's it. I go back to the doctor. He says, look, I'm telling you right now, it's your teeth. It's your teeth. Get the teeth pulled out. Your pain will go away. Well, to make a long story short, because I'm making it pretty fucking long here, and I didn't mean to go into this, but... I know that there's a lot of viewers out there that watch my videos for uh, inspiration and for a lift up to get off your ass and for depressional type situations because that's the type of person I am. I'm trying to talk to you to help you. So I'm, I'm going on with this story. This fucking doctor said, yeah, it is your teeth, okay? Here, go to these doctors, okay? So I go to this doctor. He's a fucking oral specialist. I ended up paying him three or $400. And he says, well, I'm not going to sit here and say it is your teeth, but if you pull them out, it might be your teeth. And if you get a root canal, it could be that. So I ended up going to my regular dentist, finally, after all these specialty specialists, and he tells me the same thing. I'm not going to say that it is your teeth, but I'm going to tell you this. If you leave this tooth in, eventually it's going to break at the gum line. Because the filling is so large. And if you get a root canal on this tooth, being a small tooth that it is, and with the cavity that it's got, the root canal might not take and the tooth will shatter and then you will have serious problems inside the bone and the gum. I said, what would you do? He said, well, I would go ahead and pull them out. I'd go ahead and get an implant here because by the time you spend all this money for 300 more dollars, you can go ahead and get an implant, and then you can have a bridge across there. Okay, I went ahead and got the teeth pulled out. Guess what, doctor ass motherfucker that said my teeth, it's my teeth problem. The pain didn't go away, bitch. The pain didn't go away. It wasn't my fucking teeth, bitch. Uh, I have spent on my face... Trying to figure this out in the last eight years, probably 10000 fucking dollars. And then I run into this arrogant piece of shit fucking doctor in Provo, Utah, that says, yeah, with the type of insurance that you have, we only take one patient a month, and the only opening that we have available for you is on July 10th, 2022. I said, what if I have an aneurysm? What if I have a, a fucking brain tumor? What if I have a fucking stroke because of this? Between now and then. That's not our problem, sir. That's the only opening we have available. When a doctor tells you that, that means he is an arrogant, piece of shit, scumbag, fucking, self-centered piece of shit. Did I say piece of shit? Cocksucker. I'm going to go ahead and say Sammy Slavin cocksucker motherfucker that all he gives a shit about is fucking money and the insurance you got doesn't pay me enough money to tell you what your problem is bitch and that is why I'm not a doctor I'm not a dentist I'm not a multi-millionaire and that's why I work and slave 16 hours a day, anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day. I get up at 4 o'clock in the fucking morning every day. And I work for a fucking living. Because I was not born to be that type of person. Because if I was, I would be giving my services away for free. Because if I ran into somebody like me, I'd say, sir, this has gone on for eight years. I want you in my fucking office tomorrow morning. We're going to find the problem. We're going to take care of it for you. Because that's the type of person I am. But I still got to make a living. Okay?
And we're going to get to the bug here in a minute. So, back to the 13 years of YouTube. I've been putting videos up for 13 years. You got people out there that got YouTube channels, been on for a year, and they got 60 million subscribers, 400 million hits. Um, but I only have 60,000. I just, I think today was the day that I got 60,000 subscribers, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I think that's awesome that I got 60,000 subscribers. I don't get a lot of views. I've already said this before, and I really don't care because my views are real. And the people like you that are watching them are real people. I'm not advertising my videos. I'm not promoting my videos. I'm not paying for views like all these other people do to get all their millions of views, okay? I, all the views that I get are real, 100% authentic people viewing them. Because I really don't give a fuck about making money on YouTube. And you can sit there and say you're full of shit. If I was not full of shit, I would be promoting my videos. I would be in partnership with some video fucking people. And I would be, that's all I'd be doing. I'd be this fucking doctor that says, yeah, okay, next July. That's the type of person I would be. But I'm not that guy. So the reason I said this story is because there's a lot of depressed people out there and there's a lot of people that got more pain than I have and it's basically ruining their life. And I want to say that I pray for you, believe it or not, I pray for you in church every Sunday when I go to church, I pray for you. I don't know your name, I don't know who you are, but I pray for you and hope that your life will get better. Um, as far as doctors go, okay, they got this thing called the hypocritical oath. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> the very first word that they use, hypocritical, okay, reminds me of somebody that, if you shorten it up, hypocrite, self-centered, vain, hypocrite. Okay, that hypocritical oath bullshit that you read, that's all bullshit. That's, they throw that in the trash. The only thing that you need to understand about a fucking doctor is the word hypocrite. You can sit there and say you're full of shit. You can do all this other crap. But unless you have a caring heart, and I'm not saying every doctor in the world is like that. I'm not saying that. Don't take it wrong. You might be a nurse. You might be a doctor. The doctors that I have ran into in my lifetime, 95% of them are hypocrites. They're scumbags. Many of the body shop girl fell off a 40-foot fucking cliff we went to 75 fucking doctors. Every one of them told her, fuck off. She broke her fucking leg in two places. Her leg was getting gangrene, and also the bones were melting back together, all fucked up by the time we actually got somebody that would do it. We had to pay close to $30,000 cash for her to have that done. So if you're a doctor or you're a nurse or you're a medical assistant, and you say I'm full of shit, fuck you. Okay, fuck you. That's what I'm going to say. Thank you very much for the 60,000 subscribers. It's been a long time. It's been 13 years, 12 years to get that far. Um, I feel honored. I'm very proud. Um, and I want to thank everybody out there that watches my videos, even the haters, because believe it or not, Mr. Hater Guy, when you watch my video, you're adding one number to the view line of the video. So you're the dumbass, not me. All right, we can go on about haters too, but I don't want to. Uh, let's get to the situation. I think I rambled on enough. Um, a lot of people don't like that. I don't give a shit. This is my YouTube channel, and uh, that's what I do. So how many... People we got. We don't even have that many people watching, do we? Wow. Okay, that's all right. No problem. I'm still happy. I'm alive. I'm feeling good in life. Okay, I woke up this morning. The sun was beautiful. The sky was beautiful. Beautiful day. When I get done do, doing this, dicking around, I'm going to go ahead and go and take a shower. And then I will eat something and basically play the... Daily routine situation, because when you get old in life, that's basically what it is. 
It's a daily routine situation. You do the same thing over and over. You know, go figure, right? Let's get on with the situation and let's look at the Volkswagen at hand and see where we're at on this 1955 bug. Okay, you can probably hear me a lot better because the speaker's back here. So I hope you can. Ah, there's another problem my friend Pete has right there. Fucking knee problem. Um, <laughs> let me go ahead and tell you about that. You know what the doctor told me when I went to the doctors on my knees? He said, you got, you got dozens and dozens of uh, bone spurs on your knee. Go home and take three Advil's seven, six times a day. Six times a day, three of them. That'll fix your problem. All right, enough doctor shit, fuck it. All right, so what we got here, we got a 1955 bug. Now, we have moved it over to this side of the shop where my exhaust fan is, right there. And what you're looking at, you're looking at a semi-ready, paint-ready paint Volkswagen. This was an extreme job. It was a lot of work to get this car to what you're looking at right now. Um, I'm going to be posting a detailed, highly detailed video set on this car on this channel. We're not going to put it on DIY Auto School. It will be posted on this channel. So you can see exactly what it takes to do a car that was in this condition. I'm not going to go through that. But what we are going to go through is the paint ready situation. Um, what we're going to do to paint this car we are going to paint it in sections. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to keep the dust control down. And the way that I'm going to paint this, a uh, high quality uh, double clear coat paint job, what I'm going to do, uh, we got to paint it in sections. So the first thing that I'm going to paint is I'm going to paint the inside of the trunk. I'm going to get all that painted. And this has already been prepped and ready for paint. The owner took it upon himself to put epoxy primer on the inside of the trunk and everywhere else. So we went ahead and prepped that up the best possible way we can. Um, he had a bunch of little holes here that I had to weld up. Okay, so we went ahead and welded those and we did our minor body work to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tape it all off. And then I will put uh, a, a, a coat of black sealer. Okay, epoxy primer, black sealer. I will put that on the whole thing before I do paint. Now, at the same time, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and paint the dash. I'll get the dash painted. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get the dash paint or not. We're going to have to do that. Now, we won't be doing that. Scratch that idea. And the reason I say that is because I thought there was a cutoff point over here, but there's not. There's not a cutoff point anywhere on that. So I was actually thinking about this side here. See how I could cut it off on this? Um, but there's not a cutoff point over here. So we'll have to paint that with the car. So tomorrow, what I'll probably paint, or the next day, is I'm gonna paint the trunk area, and then if we come back here, we're gonna go ahead and paint the engine compartment area. So we'll get that painted. And then, if you look at this homemade rack that I got, all right, we're going to go ahead and paint all of the little miscellaneous pieces, and we're going to go over there and look at those. Now, this is a 55 bug. This is a 55 bug that uh, we did extensive body work to and extensive primer job. The rip on this thing was completely totaled out. And did I mention that this car is going to be black? So, yeah, it was a very, very big job. But... The thing is, is it's a happy situation because this is going to be painted and it is going to be leaving my shop. All right. I love working on the cars, but I'm sorry to say the best day is when they get the fuck out of here down the road. And I got pictures and videos for memories. Um, the sooner they get out of here, the better for me. This is a job for me. I love doing it, but it's still a job that pays the bills. So... We already see what we're going to paint on that. Um, now, I can tape this off when I paint the outside of the car and the inside of the car. So everything will work out great doing that. But uh, let's go over here and let's look and see what we're going to paint. Now, I got the Camaro. I had to put the front clip back on the Camaro uh, because now we're waiting on China, uh, waiting on China to send the clutch 
kit for the fucking motor and transmission. Um, we won't be getting those until February. So I had to go ahead and I, me and Minnie set the front clip back on the Camaro. And then it'll just be in storage like it's been for the last six fucking years. But uh, here's all the little components that we'll be painting with that. Um, it's this bucket here. I got the hinges. I went ahead and took it upon myself, removed the hinges off the car. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint those separate. I think that'll add a nice, beautiful show car touch. And then we got the hood prop, and I'll let the owner go ahead and put that back on. Um, and then inside here, uh, we got all kinds of little uh, miscellaneous stuff, like this right here, for instance. So, yeah, we got to paint all this stuff. has got to be painted black. There's something that's already painted black. So we'll scuff that down and get it ready for what I'm going to do to it. Um, here is the epoxy primer the owner used on this. And this epoxy primer, I would use it if I was going to put Raptor liner on the car. Okay, that's what I would use that for. I would not use it for a custom paint job. I literally had to remove every fucking bit of that shit off the outside of the car. All right, do not buy that shit if you are going to do a custom paint job. It's worthless. Worthless fucking shit. That's all I can say. We got to paint this piece right here. Uh, this is the steering column tube. So yeah, that's got to be painted too. So we got a lot of painting to do. Um, let me update you on the Baja. Uh, this Baja, uh, our buddy H-Ball has changed his mind now. Uh, he does not want to make that into the truck. What he wants to do is he wants my friend Pete to actually find him another Volkswagen that we can actually build a truck out of. Now, I'm not saying this 100% for sure, okay, but this is a possibility that this Baja bug might be my friend Pete's, possibly it might be my friend Pete's because we might be doing some trading out on it or I will possibly just buy it right out from him. And then I will uh, do what I got to do to this thing to make it my custom situation. Because he told me that, I asked myself, well, what are you going to do with the Baja? And he said, well, I'm probably going to sell it. And I said, okay, whoa, hold it right there. Do not sell that motherfucker. You and me are going to work something out. So... Uh, more than likely, hopefully, this will be my Baja. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But don't take that to heart. I'm not going to say that for 100% sure. I don't even know if he's serious about getting rid of it. Uh, he's had this thing for a very long time. He uh, custom built it and won three Baja races with it three years in a row. And then he parked it. So... Who knows? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Anyway, this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Um, I got a lot of the Volkswagen parts. Uh, these here, these are almost paint ready. Uh, we got to do a little final sanding on them and epoxy prime and paint. I got a lot of the other parts that you don't see are in the paint booth that need reprimed. So when you're painting black, that's the situation. Black is black and... <laughs> It's a fucking bitch. That's all I can say. So when we come back, um, I'll come back on a uh, update video on this and we'll look and see what it looks like. Uh, he did get a custom black paint. It's like a pearl black or some bullshit like that, blue pearl. And it should come out pretty awesome. So um, I did meticulously sand the inside of this. And however it comes out, it comes out. I'm not going to sit there and do fucking uh, time-consuming body work on the inside of the trunk, okay, to make it look like a liquid glass. That's not going to happen. Um, so we did the best we could, and I think it's really going to turn out nice. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I'm going to let you go. I'm sorry that I bitched and complained. I want to thank everybody out there for being a subscriber. I finally hit the 60,000 mark after many, many years. Uh, do I wish I had more? Of course I do. Everybody wishes they had more subscribers. But I'm happy that I got 60. 60 is a nice even number. And yeah, there you go. We'll see you later. Take it easy. And always remember, 
If the pain is in your head, the pain can go away and you're the only one that can make it go away. Don't rely on these fucking doctors because the only thing that they want is your fucking money so they can drive their Rolls Royces and their Bentleys. So anyway, see you later.